Hi everyone, it's Alex from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can deploy your Go application up to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Now this is going to be the first tutorial in a very long list of tutorials that I've got planned that are going to be focused around how you can build and deploy applications in Go on top of cloud platforms. Now if you're interested in any topics in particular then please let me know in the comments section down below and I can certainly have a look and add them to the backlog of tutorials that I've got planned. And if you'd prefer to see this tutorial in text format, then I'll leave a link to the full text version of this tutorial in the description below. Cool, so let's dive in. So let's, let's start off by covering what Elastic Beanstalk is. Now, Elastic Beanstalk is effectively a platform as a service or a PaaS offering, which effectively takes care of a lot of the, the hardwiring or the complexities around deploying your application up to the cloud. So it's designed to be an incredibly easy to use service that developers can leverage in order to focus more on building value for the people that use their applications as opposed to spending time on the more arduous nitpicky stuff like dealing with NAT rules or service gateways or you know VPCs. Your clients at the end of the day are only focused on the value that you offer to them and not how the underlying technical solution looks. Now, Elastic Beanstalk also has an incredibly powerful and easy to use CLI for quickly getting up and running with the service and deploying your applications with ease. And it also supports a fairly substantial list of application runtimes, including, you guessed it, Go. So how does it work? Well, imagine you're a developer and you're working on a Go application that you want to expose to the outside world. Well, if you were happy with where that application was in its development lifecycle and you wanted to deploy it somewhere, you could use the Elastic Beanstalk CLI in order to push that application up to Elastic Beanstalk. Now at that point, Elastic Beanstalk will then take care of deploying your Go application for you. And at that point, Elastic Beanstalk takes care of a lot of the complexities behind deploying your application for you. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be pre presented with uh, an application that you can access over the web through HTTP or HTTPS, which is pretty awesome. Cool. So. That is just a really quick high level overview of what Elastic Beanstalk is and what it does for you. So let's dive into the code editor now and let's start creating an application that we're gonna be subsequently deploying to Elastic Beanstalk through the EB CLI. Cool, so I'm in Visual Studio Code and I've got the terminal open down here. So I'm gonna open up Zen mode and terminal. Just make this a little bit larger. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is to install the Elastic Beanstalk CLI if we haven't already. Now, if you're on Windows or Linux, this can be done through pip. So you can do pip install AWS EB CLI dash dash upgrade dash dash user. Or if you're on Mac like myself, then you can use Homebrew and you can do brew install AWS EB CLI like that. Now, after you've run those commands, you should then be able to see the Elastic Beanstalk CLI and you'll be able to verify that it works by doing eb-help. Cool, so I'm going to start off by initializing my Elastic Beanstalk application by doing eb init. And it's going to ask me a couple of questions. So I'm going to select the region, which is 16 in this case for EU West 2. I am going to say 1 and I'm going to select the runtime as with a Go based channel and this is a Go tutorial. I'm going to select Go. Then I'm going to select the platform branch, which is the first option there. And then I'm going to say no to continuing with code commit. And then do I want to SSH to my app instances? We'll say no for now. Cool. So at this point, we've got our Elastic Beanstalk application initialized. The next thing we want to do is to create it. So EB create. And this is going to ask me the environment name. And I'm just going to say default and the DNS CNAME prefix. I'm just gonna go for the default. And then we're gonna select the load balancer type. Now I am gonna go for the classic. And spot fleet requests, we'll say no. And then finally, we want to create the service role. So we'll just press enter at that point. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna zip up our application source code and deploy it up to Elastic Beanstalk for us. And we can just watch the output from this program within the terminal, like so. Cool, so now that that has completed, we can see things like the load balancer and security groups have all been created for us. 
and it gives us a, a CDM through which we can access our application. Now we can also see that this has failed to deploy, which is expected at this point as the application does not have the necessary health check endpoints implemented. So let's set about fixing that now. So I'm gonna start off by importing the net HTTP package. So net HTTP, and I'm gonna define a really simple endpoint within our application. So I'm gonna do HTTP dot handle func, passing in the forward slash path, and then we're gonna say hello world. And then just below this, we're gonna do HTTP dot listen and serve, and we're gonna do over the port 5000, passing in nil as a second parameter there. And then we're gonna define this hello world function. Oops, hello world. So this is just your standard uh, HTTP function for handling a request. So it takes in a response writer, writer, and a pointer to a HTTP request. And then we can write to that response writer using fmt.f print f, passing in the response writer and then the string that we want to write. So I'm just gonna do hello world for now. Cool, so with this in place, there's a couple more things we're gonna need to do and that is to compile the binary. So we're gonna do that in the terminal by doing go operating system is equal to Linux, go architecture is equal to AMD64, go build and the output is gonna be bin slash application and we're gonna press enter. So that's gonna go away, compile our go application into the bin directory under application. The next thing we, go, we are going to want to do is to create an eb or a dot eb ignore eb ignore file within the root of our directory and then we're going to tell it to not ignore the application binary and then save that. Next open up the terminal and we're going to deploy our app so eb deploy and I'm going to let this do its thing because it takes a while to upload it but this is gonna push our newly created binary up to Elastic Beanstalk and start it within our EC2 instances. So that has all successfully deployed and I've just run the eb open command to open up my application and I can see that within the browser at this endpoint and I'll just make that a little bit larger. Awesome. Now, if we open up the AWS console and navigate to our go eb tutorial application, we can then see our application is up and running. We can see the health of our application and we can do things like see the monitoring. So we can see how many, how much CPU utilization we've used up, the average latency in milliseconds, the sum requests, max network in and so on. And we can also see the healthy host count. Now, if we also opened up the EC2 panel and opened up the instances. We can actually see the instance that this is running on and you can see the other instances that I've terminated to test out this tutorial and make sure that it's working. Cool. So that is all we're gonna cover within this tutorial. Now we've been able to successfully create a really simple Elastic Beanstalk application and get it all up and deployed using the Elastic Beanstalk CLI. Now, in the next couple of tutorials, we're gonna start fleshing this out a little bit more and looking at how we can do things like scale up our applications and how we can do things like rolling deployments. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial or you have any comments or feedback, then please let me know in the comments section down below. And follow me on Twitter for up-to-date information around any new tutorials going out. And as always, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.